Bus converters, Gilligan family, welcome back. I am doing the much anticipated, long awaited mini split install. It's 6 p.m. I just finished the doors. I'm having a beer. I'm working late for once. Okay, so there's my line set. Here's my indoor unit. I'm gonna be doing as much of this myself as I can and then having a pro come and make the line set connection. So he's gonna cut the line set. He's gonna reflare the tubing and make the connection outside and then he's gonna pull a vacuum and uh, do a leak check. Hopefully it'll just be like an hour of work for him and an hour's more work for me. Probably not, because I take forever at everything. Okay, so the indoor unit and the outdoor unit, they communicate with each other through a signal cable. So I've got to wire this to here. Okay, I've got a wiring diagram right here. This stuff is easy, guys, you can do it. I don't know if you can read it, but it looks like I have red, blue, oh, blue, black, then yellow, and then yellow, green. What I have here is I have red, Blue, blue, black. What the heck? I got a blue and a black. Maybe it doesn't matter. I have a feeling it doesn't matter. And then another one. Shoot, let me take a look at this, figure it out. Okay, so I just basically followed the colors back here. We got red to red, we got black to black. We have orange to orange, and then my blue is going to the ground. I think there was a screw here. I'm listening to show tunes. It's really weird. This is gonna be tough to do. Be right back. Okay. Does anybody else out there just use channel locks for every bolt? Like, no respect. I mean, I don't do it on cars, but no respect for the bolts. Just chew them up. I can't think of any reason not to do this with channel locks, even though wrenches is the way to do it. I don't know where my wrenches are. What I'm doing right now is I'm tightening these two flare fitting things. This is where the refrigerant goes. So these are supposed to be torqued. Never torqued in my life. Maybe I should, but I'm going to ask the guy, do you really torque these things? He'll say, yeah, or nah. So now I got the drain tube. I think this dinky thing is the drain tube. Is it really? It seems so pathetic. This goes. So this thing has two drain tubes. One of them, you can't see it, but it's just, it comes straight out the back. And then the other one is right here. So if you don't want to use this one, then you plug it. Hmm. That doesn't fit in there. Plugging this other thing back up. I have to get this drain hose off somehow. But I've got to somehow get to that and there's just no space. All right, I got it off. I just pulled down on it with a screwdriver and pulled really hard. All right, so now I'm gonna put this, connect to the other one. Can you believe this ridiculous place I'm working? Like, I think what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to have the whole line set out, but I already put it through this hole and I don't want to feed 35 feet through that hole I'd rather feed 35 feet through not a hole. I can't even show you what the heck I'm doing. This whole condensation drain thing's kind of outrageous. It's almost like they want it to leak. <laughs> but if I can get this plug back in on this other side, it, I mean, at least I know if this thing leaks, it's it's always condensation. So you got a couple places to look and this will be the first one. This freaking plug is outrageous. How am I supposed to mash that little rubber thing into that hard plastic tube? What the heck? I'll be right back. I'm gonna finish this. Well, that was kind of freaking outrageous, but I did get it done. It is up here. <laughs> oh. Okay, so number one, usually when you're doing that, you are standing up on a ladder. Number two, you make all of your connections 
inside and then you feed your line set through the hole to the outside and down to the outdoor unit. Okay, so like I was saying, I did that all upside down and I did it backwards. Also, the most common way to exit the unit is on the right hand side, but the instructions said that the best way to do it is on the left hand side, even though it's less common. I don't know. But you have to move the drain to the side that you're going out and I think I could have had a straight run with the line set straight out the hole from the left hand side. So I wouldn't have had to do a bunch of that. Um, and then the, just the directions just aren't great. I recommend if you can hire this out, do it because it's annoying, but I don't have any money. So I'm doing this myself. I got some money stuff in the works. Don't worry, we'll be okay. We, you know, just anyways, I did it. There it is. You can do it too if you want. And I'm done for the night. Love you guys. All right, so I just cut the, the uh, hole for the exit, the two and a half inch hole saw. My buddy here is helping me with the install. Basically the thing here is we have to figure out how to coil up 10 feet of line set into that little void space that I made uh, without kinking the line set, which is something you don't want to do. So we're gonna figure that out. And then really we just gotta poke it through that hole and then make the connections. All right, so this is the hole I made. Luckily there was nothing in the way in there, but I took a video to make sure, so I referenced my video. Inside wall of window to this metal vertical support is 20 to 21 inches. So yeah, try and do stuff like that for yourself because like if you know you're gonna have to be drilling into an area or like mounting something on the outside, you don't wanna have to drill straight into like a metal support and just totally wreck your day. Try not to wreck your day. Prior proper planning prevents piss poor performance. That's what they told me. So this will go like that. This line set and cables will come through here and then I'll silicone this to waterproof it. Line set all ready to coil up into that void space right there. All right, so we got the line set through the hole. We got our power cable and our signal cable. All right, so we're losing light, but we got the line set is all connected. We got the refrigerant in, the vacuum pump is pulling a vacuum right now. We're doing electrical connections and pretty soon we'll be testing this thing. So we got a couple of hiccups with bending the line set, but things are going well otherwise. All right, so we got red to red, blue to blue, black to black. And then we got the orange going to the ground. All right, so all the connections are made. My friend just left. We're calling it a night. By the way, if you guys want to follow somebody who's great with technical, smart, difficult tasks, check out Beginning From This Morning. That's a YouTube channel name, link below. They basically told me a little while ago that the main breaker that I installed, I don't know if you saw my schoolie power thing, but my 50 amp GFI spa breaker is not gonna work with this mini split. Apparently this mini split will just kick it. It's a known issue. And so I have to swap it out for a non GFI breaker, um, which is gonna be a huge pain in the butt because it's upside down in there. So I've gotta do that before I can test this thing out for real. But for now it's on, it's just running under fan and it's late. So I'm gonna call it a night. Hey guys, it's the next day. I gotta go work a double tomorrow. So I gotta get this hole sealed up and I'd love to be able to get this mini split running. Start conditioning the space down to like 80 degrees because it's getting hot. There's Nova. Hey sleepy baby. So I'm gonna put some great stuff foam in here to insulate it. And then I'm gonna pack the outside of this with polyurethane based sealant. And I've got this cap to go in there too. So I'm gonna put that on there. Make it a little bit cleaner. And uh, then I'm gonna go underneath and fix the breaker or replace the breaker. All right, so I got the spray foam in there. I'm gonna let it expand a little bit and then I'm going to trim it and put the silicone. Hopefully Nova keeps sleeping. What do you guys think about this install, by the way? I mean, like, I think my friend did a fantastic job. It looks pretty good. I mean, a bit of an eyesore back here and underneath the bus would be nice, but here it is. It's up there. Okay, so I did manage to get that breaker installed just before Nova woke up. She's working the remote right now, so she's probably gonna change the settings in this mini split. How are you, baby? Yeah. Oh, good. 
So it's getting cold down here. Um, first started, it was about sorry, 83 degrees. We're down to 79 apparently, but it's already feeling really nice over here. That's freaking fantastic, guys. I still have some things to do. I'm gonna have to do something else with my condensate line than I originally planned. Plus I have to tidy up all those things and I still have to seal the outside, but it's been drizzling on and off. So I've got this at 75. I got the fan on high. Once this hits 75 degrees, I'm gonna bring it into Nova's room, see how long it takes to do that. So since I've been here, we just went to 77 degrees, like, and then 56% humidity. Well, that's fine, 56 is, oh, now it says 59. All right, we are apparently at 71 degrees here and 75% humidity. So this thing's not helping with the humidity. I brought this from up there where the dehumidifier was running. So the humidity was like down to like 50 and now it's up to 75. Let's see if any condensation's coming through. Not really, no condensation yet. So the remote is the thermostat. It's set to 75. This will be Nova's room. I actually think I'm gonna make a drawer side extension on the inside of this door that's gonna go to here and like lock in right there. So we're gonna be able to wall off the back half of the bus for nighttime heating and cooling which is gonna be great. So anyways, this is staying here and I'll be back soon. You know what, because it's getting like cool outside all of a sudden, I decided to be crazy and put it to 70 degrees. Oh, look at that, that's cute. Nova. All right, just checking in again on that AC. You can't even hear this thing at all from the front of the bus and I have the fan on high. Freezing cold, I am I like warm, so this at 70 to me is freezing cold. Okay, let's check on condensation. I don't see any condensation still. That's a little concerning. This thing actually creates Quite a barrier somehow. In here, we're still set to 70, but it's 77 in here. So that's pretty warm. Let's see how long it takes. I wonder if all the heat is just like dissipating out there. Might need to get a fan sending air this way. I'm gonna set up that fan and then I gotta leave for about an hour and see what we can get over here. All right, let's check on this. Let me turn this off so you can hear me. I really can hardly hear this. Frequently wondering whether it's on or not. So it's nice and cool back here. I wouldn't say it's dry though, so that's a thing to figure out. And then right here we have 72 degrees and 51% humidity. That's perfect. 51 is awesome. So we got the AC, we got the heat, we got the dehumidification. I just learned how to do that with the remote. Everything is going well. Nova, what are you doing? <laughs> 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 <laughs>